All right, good morning, everybody. Good to be on with you on this fine day. Uh, it is Friday, weekend eve, all that good stuff. First Friday of August. Uh, and man, we are, we, it's hard to believe, man, we are a week into August already. It is August the 4th here. Uh, and excited about that. We've got a wonderful weekend this weekend. Hope to see you in church. All that good stuff for our uh, church services. Uh, and excited about. Uh, about all of that. Hope you've had a great week and hope that you're going to have a great day today uh, as well. Uh, I want to encourage you, if you're just now jumping on, hit that share button so that others can jump on the live stream as well. Uh, and then we're going to be in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. We're looking at that final verse in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, which a couple of years ago was our theme for the, the year for our church. 1 Corinthians 15 and verse number 58, okay? And so I'm ready to get going here. Hit that share button once again. Good to have you on. And uh, then also be sure and comment if you are watching. All right, here we go. Uh, verse number 58, last verse. 1 Corinthians 15, last verse. The Bible says, therefore, okay? Now let's pause. Uh, therefore, you've probably heard this. If you come across the word therefore, you got to see what it is there for, okay? And uh, we don't have time to go back through through the entirety and read the whole chapter of chapter 15. Uh, but I do want to just kind of remind you of what the scripture, what our response should be. That therefore, okay, therefore, hey, as a result of what we've heard, here we go. Here's, here's the application. Here's how we're to live. You might remember Paul. Uh, in this chapter, emphasizes the resurrection of Jesus Christ. He said at the beginning that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. Therefore, okay, uh, we get into verse number 58. Also, he says, man, Jesus, yes, he's risen from the dead. They, there's living proof. There's evidence of it. There's witnesses of it. Hey, therefore, uh, he says, man, uh, if there's not a risen Savior, why do we preach Christ? Uh, we're all, our faith is vain. Uh, however, uh, Jesus has risen. Our faith is not vain. Therefore, uh, and then he talks about uh, the resurrection. Uh, he talks about the corruptible versus the incorruptible, mortal versus immortality, uh, and uh, or versus immortal. He then gets into some of the most exciting verses, I believe, in Scripture. The end of verse number 54, which says, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, uh, uh, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin. The strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. And so uh, we see all of that, uh, the victory we have in Jesus, a couple of verses before that, uh, we read of the rapture of the church. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in the moment. The twinkle of an eye at the last trumpet, the trumpet shall sound. The dead shall be, uh, shall be raised in incorruptible, and we shall be changed. What exciting verses. Therefore, uh, and then it says, my beloved brethren. Hey, those of you who know Christ is your Savior, therefore, Christians, believers, be ye steadfast, unmovable, Always abounding in the work of the Lord. Paul encourages the believer, because of what you know, because of the resurrected uh, Savior that we have and serve, because uh, we are going to get these new bodies, the rapture, Jesus is coming back, uh, and that corruptible sea will be changed to incorruptible, that mortal will be changed to immortal. Because of all that, because of the, of the victory that we have in Jesus Christ over sin, death, and the grave, therefore, my beloved, be ye steadfast. Hey, don't quit on God. He hasn't quit on you. Be ye steadfast unmovable. Hey, remain firmly entrenched in the Word of God. Don't be dissuaded from your beliefs in Scripture. Uh, trust the Word of God. Be like the Bereans, uh, where they search the Scriptures daily. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable. And I like this, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Going back to that, that those two words, don't quit. Be always abounding in the work of the Lord. Hey, we don't retire from serving Jesus. 
we might retread, uh, we might retrain, but we do not retire. Uh, we might not be able to do the things that we once did, uh, but we can still serve the Lord in some capacity. And so therefore, my beloved brethren, because of the risen Savior, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Now get this, this is going back to early in the chapter, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Why? Because we serve a risen Savior. Listen, if Jesus did not rise, our preaching is vain, our service is vain, this power up is vain. What does that mean? Empty, uh, meaningless, uh, it has no reason, no purpose. However, we serve a risen Savior. Paul gave proof. There's witnesses of a risen Savior. There are changed lives as a result of this risen Savior. And the hope that we have in Jesus in his return and the fact that we're going to get new bodies and the fact that he had victory over sin, death, and the grave, our labor is not in vain in the Lord. And so let me, let me encourage you. Man, life sometimes gets us down. Sometimes we go through trial, heartache, difficulty. I get it. Don't quit on Jesus. Your labor, your faith is not in vain. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. I'll be the first to tell you this. In my life, I have wasted so much time and energy and money and all that kind of stuff on things that won't last. Our labor for Christ will last. Let me encourage you, wherever you're watching from, you need to get into a good gospel preaching church. It's imperative. Hey, your labor won't be vain in the Lord. And then once you get into that church, don't just be a Sunday morning Christian. Man, don't just be a, a, a three-service Christian. Yep, I'm there. I did my duty. I sat there, listened to the pastor, sang a few songs. Got it. That's not God's purpose for you. Are you serving Jesus? Are you ministering in some way? Hey, I would encourage you, man, you come to Calvary Baptist Church. Man, during that handshaking time, you go up and you find somebody to greet and to talk to and welcome to the service, and you be an encouragement to them. You say, man, I, I don't know what my talents, what my gifts are, you know, all that kind of stuff. Hey, don't just fill a pew. You be an encouragement to somebody that comes in. Man, there's a lot of guests that come through our doors and, and the doors of maybe the churches that you attend. You might have a guest uh, guest come in from time to time. Hey, greet them. Make them feel welcome. Your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Hey, guess what? Let me just give you a couple of examples couple weeks, okay? We're going to have a car wash here at the church. I know I say it's just for the teenagers, but man, you should come out, just be a part of that. Help out wherever you can. Hey, greet people as they come, and we want to give them the gospel. Uh, hey, when you come, uh, we're going to have the uh, church-wide yard sale here, uh, Labor Day weekend on that Saturday. Hey, Come on out, have a booth, sell some stuff. That's great. Hey, if you don't want to come sell, hey, come mix, mingle. Come fellowship with, with the brethren. Come uh, help greet people. Help, help pass out gospel tracts. All of that kind of stuff will be such a blessing uh, and to your heart, to your soul. Hey, let's not quit serving Jesus. All of these opportunities have been uniquely created and designed to get a church family involved in sharing the gospel. Uh, and we can all do something. Hey, you can all bring your stuff to sell at the yard sale. Hey, we can all scrub a car while somebody else gives the gospel, while somebody else uh, uh, greets people. Uh, there's many ways to get involved. Hey, in a couple months, we're going to have that trunk or treat as well. Uh, that's a great way for you to get involved. In, in, a, in about a month, we're going to have our missions conference. Man, come get involved. Be a part of those things. Hey, give financially to your church to help support missionaries, to support the work in your community. Your labor, it's not in vain in the Lord. Why? Because we serve a risen Savior. Hey, Christian, let's get up off the couch. Let's come out of retirement, and let's serve the Lord like never before. Okay, uh, I'm going to leave you with that. Uh, let me go ahead and welcome and greet those that have commented live. 
Uh, and thank you for being on. If you haven't shared, be sure to do so. Brian and Cindy, good morning to you both. David, good morning. Thank you for being on. Ingrid, good morning to you. Love you. Have a great day. Uh, Cliff and Karen, good morning to you both as well. Kim, good to have you back. And uh, we've been praying for you. Uh, and uh, uh, hopefully see you back in church here soon as well. We've been praying for you uh, and glad to have you back. Uh, Barnett's good to have you on as well. Bill, good to have you on this morning. And thank you, Cliff and Karen, for that second comment. All right. Have a great day, everybody. Great weekend. Lord willing, we'll see you for services this Sunday. Uh, don't forget to be uh, in church wherever it is that you are watching from. Have a great day and a great weekend.